Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Table Talk. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Brad. This is Pastor Zach. Zach, you want to say hello? Hello, friends. Uh, Pastor Brad, why don't you tell everyone where they can get all their resources for Table Talk? Absolutely. We want to make sure that we do everything we can to help you as you chase after God and chase after His Word. If you'll go to our website, fbcfo.org, and if you'll go in the very, very top right, you'll see some drop-down menus. If you'll click watch, and what you'll find is our online sermons, which actually you preach in this very room right here in the... And the table talk that we're complimenting that sermon we put in this room. It is on there on the website. Here's some other resources that are there. Of course, you'll find this table talk and other previous table talks, but we also have a discussion guide. It's a going deeper guide that we want to put in your hands. We encourage you to use this with your personal time with the Lord. If you want to use it with your family, if you want to use it with a a group of people you're mentoring or maybe one-on-one with somebody, whatever you're doing, we encourage you to use these tools because we want to help you and it will help you go a little deeper. There's some good questions. They're open-ended and it gives you a chance to look and respond. Here's one other and probably the most important resource is we want to use God's Word and um, usually I have a hard copy. This time I brought my tablet and we encourage you make sure you have God's Word because that's where we start with Table Talk and also that's where we end because we know God's Word is the final truth, the final authority. Speaking of God's Word, that was the, the crux of your message that you just brought to us, wasn't it? It was. Uh, we, we talked about God's Word. We talked about how Jesus had, had read from a scroll from Isaiah from about the 8th BC. And when he read from that scroll, he said, all these scriptures, they're pointing to me. Wow. He was the focus of them. He's ful- these are fulfilled in him. Wow, that, that's powerful. Um, tell us, maybe you have one, two things that you really wanted to remind us of from your message. Yeah, I love so much. I love this passage when Jesus said that they, the scriptures are fulfilled in him. I thought about how when I grew up, I, I used to think that the, the scriptures were about uh, helping me become a better person, helping me be more moral. But the scriptures aren't about me being more moralistic or just being a good person. The scriptures are about Jesus mm-hmm. and how Jesus is making things right, that I am a sinful person and they're all pointing to him and how he's making things right. And I, I love how that's, that, that, that's ultimately what's taking place. And ultimately in this passage, what Jesus is doing, what he is doing is the people get upset with him because he tells them that they don't want Jesus for him. They want Jesus because he's going to, uh, uh, he's not performing miracles. They, they mm-hmm. want him to, to come into their town and, and uh, heal their, their sicknesses, heal their diseases. But uh, Jesus says, look, I'm not here just for that. You don't want me for me. You want me for what I can do for you. And so often we take that approach. But Jesus says, I'm here to, um, uh, to, for, for, to, 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 help you to, mm-hmm. to, to give you to salvation. Right. And that was what was ultimately wrong with them. And, um, I think that ultimately when, when Jesus did this, they, they, they when they realized that they wanted to kill him, they wanted to mm-hmm. push him off a cliff. Mm-hmm. They, they, they wanted to protect themselves. Wow. And you made a comment in your message that we can only do one of two things with Jesus. We mm-hmm. try and do a third thing, but we really, it's one of two things. Hit that again, would you? Yeah, absolutely. Jesus doesn't leave us that middle ground. You know, there's a quote that says from one pastor that said, we either kill him or we crown him with our life. Mm. And it's, there is no middle ground. There is no, you know, nice Jesus. We can't just let him fit into our weekends. Mm-hmm. Jesus is either, we either crown him or we kill him with our life. Wow. And uh, Jesus didn't leave us that middle ground. Wow. Hey, one other thing that I, I'd love for you to reiterate. You mentioned that the time period were the gathering of scripture to show and to prove that it truly is God's word. Give us a tiny bit on that again, would you? Yeah, I love this. Uh, I, I just remember being taught this so long ago that the scriptures that we have, it, you know, a lot of times we think, this is one book, and it is. It's one book uh, written uh, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it was written over a span of 1,500 years by 40 human authors. And, you know, those human authors were cupbearers, shepherds, fishermen, uh, (laughs) priests, uh, you know, uh, just all over the map. Mm -hmm. And But they're all telling one story that's ultimately pointing to God's restoration of His people, Mm. redeeming His people through His Son, Jesus Christ. Wow. And uh, it's a beautiful story. It's unlike any other book that's ever mm-hmm. been written. Right. And, and you know, 
Thanks for that segue, because one thing I wanted to say is that uh, the Word of God, as compared to other books, there are, there are billions of books, Yes, billions of books out there, but you can open one, you can read the words from a page, and many of them are great, whether it be uh, nonfiction, whether it be fiction, good stuff. But what sets God's Word apart is there's literal power in those words. You read those words, and it transforms a person's life, literally. And, and God's Word is full of about how, how it, when one reads the Word, how lives are changed, and how speaking the Word, lives are changed, and how hearing the Word, lives are changed. And then we also know of uh, contemporary examples. We've seen it in our own lives. God's Word is so strong, and it's so Spirit-infused that all one has to do, literally, is read it, and there will be change, there will be transformation, there will be literally a, 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 a salvation that a person can say, I need Jesus, I need Jesus. That's simple. That's powerful fantastic. stuff, isn't it? Absolutely powerful. Give us the last word, would you, Zach? Uh, th- I think you summed it up beautifully, but uh, what you just said there, it, there is power in God's Word that a lot of times we, we believe lies that, that there isn't power in God's Word, that the power lies within ourselves or there's power in, in, in other things. But let's go to God's Word. Let's spend time in God's Word daily and realize that, that, that God wants to speak to us. And this is how He speaks to us. He speaks mm. to us whenever time we go to His Word. Wow. Great word. Great ending word. Let me pray us out. And then we say, you then go dig into God's word, dig deeper and, and see how God can transform your life and the lives of those that you're pouring yourself into. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that, that you provided it, not just as great stories that we can be entertained by or uh, Bible stories that we can raise our kids on or or even uh, stories that will uh, help us in the things that we want. But Lord, instead, it is a, a thread that goes through the entire Word of God that points to Jesus because Jesus is truly the Lord of all. Jesus is the one who is the Redeemer. Jesus is the one who can change and transform our lives, and he does change and does transform our lives. So may we dig into your word. May we not take it for granted, but may we allow your word to get into us as we get into it. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, we say goodbye. God bless you, and until next time. 